Hey guys, yesterday I went to the Manila Cemetery and we've started that series now on my, my channel and it was kind of cool. And be sure to like and subscribe guys. But while I was there, I found out a, a really kind of fascinating fact. And you know, when we, when we think about all these cemeteries like, like over in Normandy and places like that and the ones here in the Philippines, we think of all those graves you know, filled up with American bodies of all the soldiers that, that, that died for our country. And one of the fascinating facts is 61% of them aren't there. They were returned. They're returned back home. And it's kind of a, a, a cool fact, but they, so it wouldn't make the cemetery look messed up. They left all the stones there, kind of like a memorial to those soldiers because they did die here. And it would be kind of a shame pulling those crosses out. But most of those guys are gone. And the funny part about it is a good majority of those people that were left behind are the um, unknown soldiers. Because nobody knows who they are. They, unless they do DNA tests on them or whatever. They just don't know who they are. And if I noticed while I was there that some of the unknown soldiers' graves had five people in them. And I show that in one of the videos. It's well worth watching the, those videos because there's a lot of little tidbits in there and stuff that you see. It's incredible. There was 36,000 missing uh, um, soldiers, both American and Filipino, during the, during the World War II in this area here, okay? That's amazing. When I saw those names there and I saw them, I was like, that's just crazy. And when I was looking up at the wall, I noticed like these little bron uh, br yeah, bronze plaques, like little bronze stars, like next to some of the names. And I was wondering what they were. And I thought maybe it was like a bronze star or a congressional medal or some something, something, some military medal or whatever. I wasn't quite sure what they were. And... What they ended up being is, they were soldiers that were found. They were taken out, um, either out of a ship, they were dug up by accident or whatever, when they were building something there in that area, and they found the body, you know. But the biggest thing that I found amazing was, and I found this on the plaque, like I said, is that 61% of those soldiers and missing from those cemeteries because they went home. I was like, that kind of shocked me. You know, it was kind of a cool fact, you know, but I learned so much over here in the Philippines. You know, there's just so many little things, tidbits of information over here. When you travel around and you go to some of these places and a lot of these people that went into that, that, that cemetery were from Bataan. Um, they were, they were, picked up later on. They were buried in people's backyards along where they had the Bataan Death March because some of the locals buried them. And later on, the military went back and, and picked them up, picked the bodies up and, and put them in there. You know, there's so many amazing stories here and they're kind of sad, but it's, it's stuff that people should know, you know, and a lot of people don't know, know that information. There were so many people that died along the Bataan Death March and most of them were Filipinos, unfortunately. And you know, when we say Filipinos, they were Americans then, you know, whether we wanna admit that or not, or not, you know, but we should, because they were Americans. If it wasn't for the Tidings McDuffie Act, guess what, they'd still be Americans today. They were the only people that I can recall that were ever stripped of their American citizenship. You know, they were actually stripped of their American citizenship through the Tidings McDuffie Act. And, you know, Filipinos are hardworking people. If we had kept the Filipinos, the, Fili the country itself, which I'm not saying we should or shouldn't have, I'm saying if we had, if we had, I would imagine that this place would be a lot different than, say, Puerto Rico or any of those co other commonwealths that we have. It'd be totally different. I don't think it would be as, as poor as it is today. I think it would be a hustling, bustling country. I think it would be more like Hong Kong, 
you know? And it'd be a huge Hong Kong. It's kind of fascinating though when you think about what could have happened if they had stayed under the United States rule because of the money that would have went in here to fix things up, you know? It's just kind of amazing, it amazes me. And the world would be in a different place today because we would still have bases here and we would still have some control over this Chinese thing that's going on here. It just makes it really interesting to think about. You know, I, you know, I have to be careful of how I talk and what I talk about on here, you know, but I'm not saying I'm pro-colonization because that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, you know, what would have happened had it stayed in the Americans' hands. You know, there would have been skirmishes. There would have still been battles here because there are groups here like communists, N NPA, um, probably some of the Muslim groups, the guerrillas and stuff like that, you know, that we had problems with back way, way back in the Philippine American War and the Spanish American War. We'd still have problems with those today, for sure. You know, it would be, it's, it's an interesting thought though to think, think about that and kind of rehash that in your brain, what would have happened. I mean, I think that's probably part of the reason why they decided to cut, cut loose the Philippines and let it become its own country, but kind of have like some sort of eye on the Philippines to kind of help them out to make sure things went well. And they kind of took their own turn and, and then get rid of the bases. I think that was a big mistake, but maybe that'll change. And I do see some change here because they are going to let that ship building thing in here. And is that going to be an American base? No, it's going to be a company. But those ships will be allowed in there, and I'm sure they're going to have some sort of place there where American sailors can stay while they wait for their ships to get fixed or what have you. You know, so it'll be kind of interesting to see how all this all plays out in the future. And you know, whenever you guys come here, be sure to visit these memorials and the place where the Bataan Death March took place because they have a beautiful museum there. And that cemetery that I went to, the Manila American Cemetery there, that, that cemetery has a museum there, which I didn't get into, get into by the way. And I am gonna go back in and do that. And I, I do wanna spend some time in there so that I can give it some justice. I know I don't get a lot of views on the cemetery um, videos, and that's okay, I'm okay with that. I'm not in this for the money. I, I do it because I enjoy doing what I do, you know, and I do my daily vlogs such as this one, you know, but I try to put those out separately. <laughs> and um, I do want to do more of those. And, you know, I, I understand some people don't like just like walking through a cemetery or watch that or anything, but, you know, something. And I, I think we need to watch those sometimes to think about our country. You know, what, what people did for our country and those guys that died for our country. And after I posted it, I was up to about 300, I think about 300 and something. I noticed that there was two thumbs down. And that was really disappointing to see those two thumbs down on those videos because it shows, a, it shows that people have a, I don't know, there's kind of a sick mentality traveling around the world today. You could do a, a video of Mother Teresa and you'd get two thumbs down. Or giving to the poor, you'd get two thumbs down. You know, or even five sometimes. And I see this all the time. I'm not quite sure why it happens. It just shows how sick the world is sometimes. It really is. You know, and some people say, well, that's an algorithm. No, it's not an algorithm. Somebody has to press that button. You know, somebody says, well, it's a bot. You know, bots don't watch your videos. You know, not that I know of anyway. Because... I don't pay to have my videos watched, they get watched by people. But anyway guys, when you come here, be sure to check out those places, the Bataan Death March, Corregidor, Fort Drum is an amazing place. And I have videos on that too. If you guys like um, battle monuments and stuff like that, Fort Drum is an incredible place. You know, and they burned the Japanese out of there, they poured kerosene and oil in there and lit it on fire with them in there because they wouldn't come out. Because those are the same soldiers that mistreated the Americans and the Filipinos. And they were really worried that they were gonna to get tortured when they came out of there. So they didn't come out. And we just poured gasoline in there and kerosene and, and lit it on fire. And I might say, 
quite a well-deserved ending for what they did to those people in the Bataan Death March, because they tortured those people really, really, really bad. If they asked for water, they'd shoot them, they'd kick them, beat them. A lot of the bodies, some of them are still there missing on the sides of the road. Some of them ran into the bushes, probably got shot a little ways into the forest, and probably died right there, you know, and later on found by maybe, you know, some of the people that lived around there and buried there. And some of them were, were later on found or people told the military, yeah, yeah, there's a body buried over here or whatever, you know, and, and you can dig it up and put it in the grave. And that's, that's how they ended up in the, in the Manila Cemetery. There's so many sad stories here from both World War II and the Spanish-American and the Philippine-American War. There's so many stories to keep you busy here for the rest of your life here. You know, and it, it's fascinating, those stories that I hear. And I want to share some of those as I go along, you know, with you guys as I hear some of these stories. But I wanted to share that today about the cemeteries being over here being 61% 60, empty. You know, throughout the world, the ones outside the United States are 61% empty because most of them went home. Anyways, guys, I just want to share that with you. I thought that was kind of a fun, fun vlog to do just to share that about that 61% because that is kind of a cool fact, you know. But anyway, guys, God bless. Take care.